Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Lich Tran and welcome to my video channel and my website at www.ruling-academy.com The place for ruling rules where you will find heap of good stuff about ruling equipment, rig and tools operation, well controlled equipment and principles explanations. As mentioned a few times ago about touching on sub-C BOP, today I have composed the first part of the sub-C BOP control system and equipment overview and I would like to present this work to you guys. It is nothing new for a sub-C engineer and for drilling hands on work, uh, working on floater rigs, but for those that sub-C BOP is a once in a while topic, then this very first part will provide you an overview and the basis and with enough in-depth knowledge of how a system operates and in this very first part we will examine and learn how an indirect hydraulic control system works. Unlike the surface BOP where the BOP is dry on surface, this is surface BOP over here, right? The surface stack is used in land rig, platform rig, uh, jack up rig, tender barge rig and the control system is direct control system. The sub -C BOP itself is over here. sub -C BOP itself is, uh, this, the name is self-explanatory that the BOP is wet in water and seabed and thus the control system is indirect and we will examine why it is indirect later. And sub -C BOP system is a way for you to go when you drill with floater rigs such as semi submersible or drill ship. And now you may ask a question, what are the major differences between the direct and indirect control system? To make a simple direct control system does not deploy pilot fluid. There is only command part to activate the solenoid valve which moves the air pressure, which in turn actuates the manipulator to move and send power fluid to activate a BOP function. And BOP fluid after a BOP function is recovered to the reservoir. In indirect control system, there is pilot fluid in between the command part and the actuating power fluid part. The command part activates a solenoid valve, which then sends pilot fluid to activate another subsea uh, control valve to send the power fluid to function the BOP, and there is no attempt at all to recover power fluid to the reservoir after a BOP function. Uh, but after every BOP function, there is some part of the power fluid discharged to the surrounding environment and we will touch base on the direct control system in another part. In this very first session here, we will explore how the indirect control system of sub BOP works. Alright, so now the question is why is sub BOP control system indirect? The reason is the BOP is located at seabed, which is quite a long distance from surface in many cases, and there is a great deal of hydraulic hoses going down from the Kumi unit to the BOP stack if we apply in the direct control philosophy. Thus, more, uh, furthermore, in the event of deep water, the time for a BOP function to respond from activation in the surface is much longer if we apply the, uh, apply the direct control philosophy. Therefore, to reduce the handling of numerous horses and to comply with restricted response harm, especially in deep water up to thousands of feet, the indirect control philosophy is developed to fulfill the requirements. And as we, as we have known that there are two types of indirect control, the indirect hydraulic system and the multiplex, multiplex uh, electro-hydraulic system, uh, in short, we call it MUX which is the most common system nowadays. All right, and the key differences between the, the two systems is that in the indirect hydraulic system, the command composes of electric part and air operated part, and the pilot signal is sent from surface down to the subsea parts. In the MAX system, the command is composed either of, of electric or optical signal only, and the command is sent from surface control, uh, control unit down to the sub BOP pass and the pilot part is only happen within the pass down there in sub -C. Rather than that, the other things in life, power, uh, power fluid and pilot uh, fluid, they are all hydraulic fluid and happen at sub -C as well. Now in this very first part here, we'll examine how I do indirect 
uh, control hydraulic control system works and we have here the master electric signal and uh, uh, sorry the ma master electric panel and the mini electric panel here these are where you operate uh, BOP functions and this is the power pack where the power is supplied to the Kumi unit this is the Kumi unit and you have hoses, hose bundles, these two hose bundles coming out from the Kumi unit then I go to the hose reel, this is the hose reel and then they go down hole to the subsea BOP parts alright they go down to two, both parts and to run and retrieve these parts independently you have uh, winches uh, winches here, one winch, one winch here so these winches are to run and retrieve the parts independently this is yellow part, this is blue part and this is the part guy frame and uh, you have hoses here, this is hose bundle and you have subsea height uh, subsea accumulator bottles mounted at subsea stack and on, and on the LMRP and this picture here, is, uh, here show you how an uh, umbilical might look like it has a central hose which is one inch diameter to send the power fluid fr from the accumulator bottle uh, at Kumi surface down to the parts right and in it, in this ability here, you also have many smaller hoses. In this example, it shows you three 16-inch ID hose. They are the pilot hose, and also the pressure readback hoses to go back to the control panel here. So that's all the major components of my of an indirect hydraulic control system. Now let's examine how the system works. Uh, let's pay attention closely to the mouse pointer over here because I'll explain you uh, the principles here so on surface at the control panel uh, you will choose which part is active part you have a part selector valve right you choose yellow part or blue part in this example here you choose blue part as the active part and thus the, the, the yellow part is inactive now the principle is pilot fluid is sent to both parts to uh, this, the parts to the sublet mounted pilot valves in both parts what happened in the active part here are happening at the same time on the inactive part that's the principle the second principle is power fluid is sent from surface from these accumulator bottles, the power of fluid is stored at 3000 psi to 5000 psi, right? And it is sent down to only selected or active part only. In this example here, when you choose blue part here, the manipulator valve moves to this position here, and it lines up the part to align the supplied the supply here 3000 or 5000 psi depending on particular system down down to the blue part from on the other line here it lines up the line from the yellow yellow part is lined up here and went it back to the tank all right so this is the principle right now we come back here when we press a command let's say open up a RAM BOP open right we press the button open and the signal is sent to the, con the central processing unit and the central processing unit here sends an electric signal to a coil of the corresponding solenoid valve for open BOP and so this is happen at the central processing unit here the coil is activated it pulls the armature back inside it and it opens up the port here to allow rig air supply this is rig air supply 100 or 125 psi air supply it is passed through this solenoid valve it goes down to this air operated piston and this piston here will move the handle of the pilot control valve the pilot control valve here is located at the central processing unit as well so then it moves the, the, the manipulator to this position at this position here it lines up the port to allow 
the pilot accumulator, the pilot fluid, which is supplied from accumulators here. Remember now, the pilot fluid is only 3,000 psi. In all scenarios, 3,000 psi is supplied here to this port, and the valve lines up this port to this output port here, and send it sends the pilot signal to both parts at the same time to active part and inactive part and because you, we, we press open here so this pilot signal is open signal it goes to the open con uh, pilot valve in both parts alright so now let's look at this active part remember what happened on this port here are happening at the same time on this part here so then the pilot fluid goes to the open pilot valve which is open SPM valve it opens up the valve here right so it opens up the valve here and it allows the power fluid here to go out right to follow this one here power fluid is linked out here now look the power fluid as we said before is sent to from surface bottles down to the active part only and at here in within the part it is joined with the power fluid supply from subsea mounted accumulators these accumulators as subsea is storing the hydraulic power fluid at 3000 to 5000 psi and these two streams joins together before it goes to the regulator and the regulator here will regulate the power fluid from 3000 or 5000 psi down to appropriate pressure for certain function on BOP or LMRP or the connectors okay this 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 uh, hydraulic regulator here is adjusted from surface there's another air operated a regulator on the surface so you press the, uh, the button increase or decrease you s uh, the, the central unit will send the signal uh, to the air operated regulator and which in turn will regulate the power fluid or uh, the, the pilot fluid down to this regulator so this is this regulator here is hydraulic but it is controlled from another air operated regulator at surface at the central processing unit okay now so this one here the output this line here the output of the power fluid now is regulated right for the RAM BOPs it's 1500 psi for annular BOP and for both zones it's 500 to 1400 psi it depends on, on, on your setting the power fluid here is supplied to both SPMs open SPM and closed SPM but because there is no pilot pressure is applying to the closed SPM so this SPM this pilot valve is closed it's closed by the spring force of the spring in here and the hydrostatic pressure of the sea water so it's the valve is closed and it pushes the pilot fluid in the line here back to this surface pilot control valve here so this is happen at the same time on both part so the pilot fluid of the opposite function of the same BOP is vented back through this uh, is pushed back to this pilot control valve this pilot control valve at this position lines up this port this port to this port and vents the pilot fluid back to the tank all right so pilot fluid is a closed loop circuit circuit but power now now okay now let's go to the power part the power part so after regulated here the power fluid goes down here it goes to this shuttle valve this shuttle valve is to isolate it shuts off the supply from the inactive part right it, uh, right so the shuttle valve shuts it off here and it links this port to this port and it sends the power fluid to both sides to both doors of the BOP to function the BOP in this scenario in this example is to open up the BOP 
So when the power fluid is pushing the operating uh, cylinder out here, the f there's another part of the power fluid on this side of the chamber. This part of the power fluid is pushed out. In the hose here, in the line here, it is pushed out. It's pushed out in here on two doors, and it joins together and goes to this shutter valve and shut off the inactive plot side, and it goes it goes to the close SPM and it's rented to see. So for power fluid part it is open loop circuit. After every BOP function you lose some part of power fluid. It's discharged to see and this is the principle of how that happens. Alright now let's look at uh, let's take a closer look to the pilot control valve and the oscillator valves to see how they work. For the pilot hydraulic pilot control valve, as we said before, right? When you press open here, the electric signal triggers the solenoid valve here. Open up the, the valve and allows air to travel to this air operator and pull handle. And let's say this is the open position, right? The 3000 PSI hydraulic pilot is supplied here, line up here and go down here. Now look at the output of these two lines here. There are pressure sensors. Alright, pressure transducer. They will transmit the pressure in here back to the central, uh, the central processing unit and where it will send the signal to light up the bulb in here. Alright, so if the pressure in here is this more than let's say 700 PSI, the uh, the pop here will be lit up, all right. And if there is no pressure, the light is off. Uh, the light and uh, the pop is off, all right. So that's the principle of how pops wo uh, work. Uh, how the pops are lit up in subset BOP control panel. It's not by proximity sensor. It's by pressure sensor, pressure transducer, all right. And when you put, when you press block, all right. You, you send when you press blocks, uh, the central processing unit will send electric signal to both sides, to both coils, right? Triggers both these two solenoid valves, and air air is now allowed to pass through these two uh, solenoid valves. To and they go to, the air goes to this air operated piston, and because the air will act on two sides of the piston, so it will place piston in the middle position. In turn, the piston will move the handle of this control valve to the middle position, which is here. This is a three-position, three four-port manipulator. So at the middle position here, you see the supply here is blocked off. And the output here, two-line output, closed line and open line here, they are drawn together and they go here and they actually they are vented back to the tank. Right? So when it's vented back to the tank, Alright, you have no pressure in these two lines, so the block light will, will light the, 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 the block li block light will will be on, and the last position of the BOP remains on, so that you know what is the last function of that certain BOP. So this is how a hydraulic control pilot valve works, and now the oscillator valve works in the same way. Alright. Alright, I'm not going to explain from the beginning now, when you choose blue part, electric signal is sent to this coil, it triggers this valve, air is passed through this valve to the uh, air operated piston, and it moves the handle to this blue position here, and now at this position here, it will line up the supply of the power fluid 3000 or 5000 psi here, down to the, 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 the active part, and on the act in inactive part, the line is go is vented back here through this port here and is vented back to the tank. And when you press block, you place in here. So these two coils, these two valves will be triggered at the same time. Air is passed through to both valves and to the same operator. We we'll place the operator at the middle position, which is in turn we we'll move the handle to the middle position, which is blocked. And in this block here, you see it blocks off the supply here. The supply is blocked. And the two line, yellow line and, bl and blue line here are drawn together in here and vented back to the tank. Alright, so that's how the postulator valve works. Now let's see how the SPM works. 
the SPM is the pilot control valve. Uh, sorry, not the pilot control valve, the pilot valve. The pilot valve, it has only two positions, it has three ports. Uh, it has spring, and it has a, uh, a, C, a port vented to sea to, uh, to get the hydrostatic pressure from the sea water. It has upper seat, which is for open, and lower seat is for close. And it has a power supply port, and it has a output port, right? Mm. So when we apply pressure into this port here, the 3000 BSI here, when we apply pressure here, actually the normal position of this valve is closed. This valve is normal closed. When you don't have pressure applied in this port, the spring force here, together with the hydrostatic pressure of the seawater, will push the spindle, this is the spindle here, it is pushed down to the lower seat, right? It's pushed down to the lower seat here. It sits here and it blocks off the supply. The supply here is blocks off. And when you apply 3000 psi in here, it will lift up the spindle. The spindle is pushed up, right? And then it moves to this seat here. It's opened up and it allows connection between the input port and the output port. Now let's see how the pilot signal goes. The pilot signal is sent down to both parts at the same time. To the same function, let's say to the same in this example is closed BOB, right? To close around the middle round BOB. So the closed signal is sent to both parts at the same time to the closed SPM valve. It's opened up, it opens up the the spindle of two SPM valve, alright? But the power fluid is only sent to the active part, which is this part, right? And the active part here, in it, within this active part, power fluid is supplied to both open and closed SPM. But because only closed SPM is not triggered, the power fluid, after regulated, is sent down to the shuttle valve here. It shuts off the supply from the active part, inactive part. It goes down to both doors to activate the closed function of the BOP. And now the, f the operating fluid on the other side of the operating chamber now is pushed out and it shuts off, uh, it goes to the shuttle valve and shut off the inactive part side and it is routed back to the open SPM and it's vented because now this open SPM is closed, it goes inside, it goes inside the spindle, it goes up and it is vented to the side. Alright, now on this open SPM here, you see because it's closed, the pilot fluid in this closed port, in this open uh, pilot line here is pushed back to the pilot control valve as at the central processing unit here and it's lined up here to this port and it goes, it's rented to the, to the tank. So this is how SPM works and how the pilot signal, and how the pilot circuit works. Now the power fluid, now the let's examine the power fluid circuit. The power fluid is stored at surface uh, in accumulators at 3000 to 5000 psi and it is sent to only active part. Right? In this example here, the post selector valve here at this position is for blue part, it is sent down here, sent down here. Right? So within at the part, upon arrival at the part, it is drawn with the supply from the accumulator borrows mounted sub C on the LMRP or on the stack itself also at 3000 to 5000 psi this part here the power fluid here goes here now it goes up here and because this power fluid here goes down here and is acting on this shutter valve it push it blows the ball to this side to shut up the inactive side it allows connection from this supply here to this supply here so these two streams run together at five to three to five thousand psi and this into th these two streams merge merge into one stream you go to this regulator as we said before this regulator is adjusted by another air operated regulator on the surface so this regulator here will regulate the power fluid from three thousand to five thousand psi down to appropriate uh, working pressure level of the certain BOB function. Uh, let's say this is in this case 1000 psi power fluid for the RAM BOB. Right, then this power fluid will go to a shuttle valve to shut off the supply from the inactive part here and it goes to both doors to activate the closed function, a BOB function. 
Right, this is how the shuttle valve works. Shuttle valve is very simple here. It has one port in, second port in, and one port out. So if you at the so now the ball is in this position. So if you apply pressure into this port here, the pressure will blow the ball to this port and seal up this port here and allow connection from here to here. And the same way in here, right? If you blow the uh, apply pressure into this direction, it will blow the ball to this side, seals off this side, and allows connection from this 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 port to this port. And if you don't, you stop applying pressure, the ball will remain at the last position where it is. All right. So basically, this is how the power fluid circuit works and how the shuttle valve works. Uh, so these are the basics and the foundation of how indirect hydraulic control system works. I hope you guys did get in some useful information out of the presentation. So many thanks and please direct your comments or questions if you might have to my personal email address at lich.201.yahoo.com.sg I am composing part 2 for the MAX system which is coming soon. Uh, we'll see you soon in the part 2. Uh, meanwhile, not to forget to check out the website www.ruin-academy.com where I post many other technical articles about ruling, about rig and equipment and well control principles and procedure and also standards. Thank you and see you soon. Bye.